Hi everybody. One of the things that you guys always are asking for are updates. And yesterday, I was in the lived experience lounge at the National Alliance to End Homelessness Conference and Russ walked in. I immediately knew. Um, I don't have the greatest memory, but I remember every person on Invisible People. So I went up, oh, this thing is jangling. So I went up and I said hello, and Russ said, yeah, that video, but it was a documentary he was on. He forgot that five years ago, we met on the streets of Ottawa and Russ was homeless. Tell me about it. Tell me about then and now. Okay, well then, like I said, I was um, living at the Salvation Army. Um, I had come from Winnipeg. I had been working with the Mental Health of, uh, of Canada. And I, uh, I was unemployed. So I went looking for work. I found a job and I started by uh, accepting help. That was the, that was the first step. I, I was offered something as simple as a, a bed in the Salvation Army on the fourth floor, which was a lot cleaner than down in the basement. And it was, um, the food was better. And I could come and go as I please during the day instead of being kicked out and forced to walk the streets all day. So I started going there, accepted that and, and helped them with it. Then I was asked to uh, join the life skills program. I looked at them and I said, why would I want to join a life skills program? I got lots of life skills. But they said they needed me for to get other people involved. They needed someone to get in, get involved and then other people will start getting involved. I said, okay, so I joined the life skills program. After three months, they were really happy about it. And I was still up on the fourth floor, which was really good. Uh, I was living better, feeling better, thinking better. And they offered a halfway house. And I said, well, you know, okay, I'll, I'll go to your halfway house. And when I went to the halfway house, they said, there's a place called Causeway just down the street, not too far from here. We'd like you to go there and start looking for work. I said, okay, and I'll go there and start looking for work. It took a month. And I put out at least 60 res uh, resumes and, you know, uh, for, for jobs, and I didn't receive any, any replies. I was a little down, and I was thinking, ah, why bother? But the people at Causeway said, Russ, don't give up on yourself. They didn't say, don't give up on Causeway. They said, don't give up on yourself. And I said, okay, I'll try. And the next day, I got a, uh, a job interview. I didn't get the job, but I thought, okay, that's a start. And it wasn't too long after that, I got a second job interview. And on the second inter job interview, I was hired during the interview. So I started working at a shelter, and I worked uh, at the, um, they call the Shepherds of Good Hope, the TESP program, which is where people that can't stay in shelters are allowed to sleep at night, even if they're intoxicated or on drugs. It's a low barrier. Very, you know, like, where, where nobody else was, was accept, would accept right, them. Right, right, right. We, we took them in. It's important. It's important, you know. They, it's, so I, I worked there for a year and a half. I went and worked with the MAP program, which is the managed alcohol program. And I got to know a lot more of the people on the street. Well, first off, I lived on the street, you know, I knew people. But working with them is different. You get to know them on a different level. And I worked there for a year and a half, and then I was offered a job at an Aboriginal center in Ottawa and I accepted it, and now I am an HBCM, Housing Based Case Manager, and my job is to help people get off the street, which is unbelievable. I've done this before in Winnipeg. I had the experience. 
I have uh, uh, my life experience, which is really important too. And I've been doing this for three and a half years. And I've been working and uh, I've got my own place. I've been living in my own place for, oh, probably the past four years. And I've, uh, like I said, when I first had your interview with you, so I was living on the street, yes. I, uh, I get knocked down, but it takes a while and, and I got back up. And uh, I think the main key to it, and I tell people about this here, and when I'm in Ottawa, I tell them, you got to be able to accept help. Because when you're in that position, when you're on the street, hope, yes, we, we want hope, we need hope. But sometimes we get so down on ourselves and on the, on the situations that we're in that we lose that hope and we don't want that help anymore because they put so many barriers in front of us that keep us yeah. down. I, I, it's learned helplessness. Yeah. And I talk about it a lot on this channel is that people, when they're first homeless, try to get help and they keep hitting the wall. They keep hitting the wall, they keep hitting the wall, and the brain is very powerful. So the brain has to do one of two things. The brain has to say, I'm a piece of crap, society hates me, or I'm going to enjoy homelessness, I'm gonna to adapt to life on the streets, and that becomes your life. And then change is hard, we're all scared of change. So then the learned helplessness sets in, and it's really hard, you give up looking. And it's really, 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 I, I, it's, I know it may be hard for some of you to understand that, but for people that have been outside for any length of time, they've tried and they've just given up. Well, that is one of the things. If you keep on failing and trying, trying to get back up off the street, it's really hard to accept that help because people keep on coming to you and saying, hey, we're gonna be the, the great saviors, we're gonna help you get off the street, and then you fail the program because they have so many barriers. Um, I think that housing first is the true way to go. And I've been, a, I've been an advocate for housing first because instead of having to go through programs right. to be housed, we're gonna house you first then if you want to go through programs, we're going to work on that to see the reasons why yeah. you were homeless, why you're in that situation that maybe we can do something. There's all, all sorts of help out there. And that's the hard part is accepting that help and, 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 and working towards it. So using your own life, the story you just told me, um, when we had met, you were in a shelter that kicked you out during the day. Yeah. And it was hard to move forward in life. Yeah. And most shelters still have that model. And they kick people out even in freezing cold weather. And then once you were able to have a little bit, I don't want to call it freedom, but uh, where you were given more dignity and more the ability to actually stay in a place and leave and come back and at your own free will, then you were able to work on getting a job and here you are. You used the right word, dignity. Dignity is having your own home and having a key that you can come and go as you please. and. That, that is something that you don't have in the shelter. You can't come and go as you please. Um, you feel that you're, you're being uh, uh, regimented by their when to eat, when to sleep, you know, when to take a shower, when to do what they want you to do. When you, when you have your own home, then you have that dignity that I can get up, I can sleep when I want, I can eat when I want, I can go outside when I want, and I can come back in when I want. That is the first step, I believe, on the road back. Because then after that, let's start talking about, you know, working on how to keep you in that place. Right. 
then a new challenge is starting yeah. once you're out. Then, then, you know, after that, we can start looking at reasons why yeah. you were on the street in the first place. But the dignity of your own place, your that you're in control yeah. Is, yeah. is a big part of it. And, you know, many people just, the public sees a homeless person and then why don't they just go in the shelter? Well, you know, you could be Michelle Obama or Mike Pence or a Navy SEAL. And, you know, so a typical shelter, you've got a hundred cots, maybe two bathroom stalls. You stand in line for everything, for showers and food, you have no choice. True homelessness is absence of choice. And then they kick you out every morning and you know, that's gonna help somebody's mental illness or drug addiction or help them get a job? No, but that's what we've been doing for hundreds of years and homelessness is getting worse. We have to change. Well. I remember saying this, people say people on the street are lazy, why don't they get a job? It's hard to get a job when you don't have an address, it's hard to get a job when you don't have a phone number, it's hard to get a job when you're tired all the time. Now how, you're not being lazy, you're tired, you're walking those streets, you're, wherever you go people are asking you to move on, wherever, you know, uh, at night, it's hard to sleep, and I've said this, and I remember this video, that uh, at night, it's hard to sleep in a place where people are snoring, where people really smell bad, and it's not their fault. And where there's people that uh, have, have mental health problems that could end up waking up in the middle of the night screaming. Now, everybody needs that seven hours or eight hours or nine hours sleep for to keep themselves physically and mentally at a good level. You could not imagine sleeping in a place where maybe you might get four or five hours of sleep and the rest of the time you're angry because somebody's waking you up. Somebody's, And then before you know it, it's six o'clock in the morning and their lights are coming on and they're Keeping saying, okay, up. let's no leave. Yeah, you, you gotta leave, you gotta leave. And then you gotta pick up your stuff and carry it with you all the time. So let me ask you this, and you're gonna hate me because I'm gonna ask you again in another video. Uh, how do we end homelessness in Canada? Well, I remember the first answer I gave to you. So we gotta have homes. And it sounds simple, but we've got to talk to the, to the government and say enough is enough. We have to put money into social housing. I remember again the last time I talked to you that the condos are moving into the poor parts of town because it's cheap land. Gentrification. And they're, they're kicking out everybody that, you know, that were living in those old rooming houses and now they have no place to go. But since then there's another new factor that has come in and it's called the air uh, B&Bs. Yeah, the short-term rentals. I've had clients that have been offered, you know, a thousand dollars from their landlords to leave. The reason why is they want to, they can make five to ten thousand dollars a month doing the short term rentals. Doing the short term rentals, Airbnb, than just that thousand yeah. dollars that they would make for rent. And of course, when you're you're marginalized and you're not really uh, have that much money, a thousand dollars is a lot of money, yeah. you know, a lot of incentive, and they take it. Yeah. And then they end up back on the street again. Yeah. So, you know, like we, we got a new wrinkle in there. We have, we have other wrinkles. Uh, um, they're, they're not making apartments. They're not making rooming houses. Um, if, if we're constantly taking this away for, for the poor, they got no choice but to go on the street. And once you're on the street, you can jump into that hole and you can dig yourself deeper and deeper and yeah. deeper. And the average life yeah. span on the street is 40 years old. And you don't see very many real old, long time street people. Mm. They're very few. 
Man. There's a gentleman uh, I interviewed, um, uh, it's up the couple before this video in Austin, Texas, and he was on the street 35 years. And I've, I've seen a lot of people out on the streets for long periods of time, but he didn't look it. And that was kind of shocking, but he had had procedures in place where he was taking care of himself. Yes. Most people that are out on the streets 10 years, 15 years, are, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, just in such a horrible condition. Yes. You know. And I know people that, uh, yeah, they look good. They know the right places where to go and take showers. They know the right places to get their, their, their clothes clean. They know the right places for to go and get new clothes. Yeah. And they don't want to look like they live living on the street. Yeah. Uh, those ones are not so much into their addictions, but probably borderline mental health. You know, there are, maybe it's a situation. They didn't have anybody to, to help them and they fell into the hole and they haven't gotten them their way out. Yeah. But, you know, everybody is an individual on the street. Every story is different. You know, we can't just uh, keep on trying to say we're going to put that square peg into that round hole. And yeah. I really don't like those that concept. Or that everybody, you know, like the the solution is is cookie cutting. Everybody's the same, and we can, you know, we can come up with solutions there. Yeah, we can come up with general, large term solutions, but we also have to come up with individual. Uh, individualized solutions to homelessness. Well, thank you for spending a little time. No. Uh, they do. The you know, as I travel and interview homeless people, everybody's asking for updates, updates, updates. And whenever possible, I try to update. And it is so amazing seeing you. <laughs> I mean, really, it made uh, yesterday, uh, he, he was playing the Invisible People video to his friend Christopher, um, and that just, oh my gosh, touched my heart. So it's great seeing you, and thank you for spending some time. Those of you in Canada, scream real loud for housing, same in the States and in the UK, pretty much everywhere. We gotta do something about this affordable housing if we're ever gonna end homelessness. We're gonna end the homelessness. What's the problem? What do homeless people need? Homes. And we're gonna have to find a way to solve this problem. Thank, Thank you. you. We did that in stereo. <laughs>